after buzzers welcome to the unlocking the truth after show where we are reviews reviewing season two season one wow i cannot speak tonight season one episode two and it is called ain't no change in the house of pain so stay tuned because we have two cases to discuss and one is brand new be right back you're tuning into the destination for tv super fan discussion after buzz tv and now let the buzz Begin. For the kid, I'll be in zone six. Yo, we got less than that. It's all happening. We're changing it all tonight. Welcome, guys, to the party after show of Unlocking the Truth. You know, we got to make, you know, some type of fun. We're talking about all this serious, crazy cases, all the drama happening tonight. Welcome, I am your host, Nadine Dallapella, and you can find me everywhere at Nadine DP3. And to my left, I'm Abigail Frere, and you can find me at Abigail Frere. I'm Maddie Makeley, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Maddie underscore Makeley. What's up, guys? I'm Olivia Gabre, and you can find me on Instagram and, twi and Twitter at the real underscore O underscore G. There we go. Awesome. I love that, by the way. We haven't discussed I love your the handle. Real OG. Yes. It's the real OG. The real OG. You get it? Because my initials oh, are OG. Yeah, yes. I figured it out. I did there. <laughs> it kind of took me until rewatching the show last time and to actually see it on the screen. I was like, oh, You just I thought, get I it. thought I was an original gangster. I, I, I like, gave you a lot of props that for that. And so I was, real, I was real into it. So, anyway, guys, yeah, so stay tuned. Follow us on the chat. Um, we will talk. We'll talk with you guys and um yeah so initial thoughts guys going down the table how do we feel <laughs> i uh, uh. yeah <laughs> wow. that's, that's, all right, that's then, something. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and then. oh god um this one especially calvin's case is like totally a new case that, mm -hmm. this is like totally like completely like switching the the thing on us but i don't know i don't if it I'm like so confused with everything especially like how they're approaching the show yeah. like i don't think we're even going to find out about the next case for like a while you know what i mean mm -hmm. like, I, I i didn't think that they would be doing the show like this but i really want to like know if they're innocent or guilty at this point and i feel like they're gonna make us wait yeah i think that we should roll in like a nice vision board and connect everything together because MTV's a mess and I'm mad <laughs> yeah. that they I just I don't know I don't get it I don't see yeah. the logic in the order of mm -hmm. the things that they're throwing us but yeah whatever. I mean we do have a lovely whiteboard right here we can get a new camera That's we can true. you know we can get post it on angles. there get some angles but yeah I kind of agree with you guys I'm just it's so confusing there's just so much information and what I'm kind of taking from it is the fact that they don't have a lot to talk about and so we have been joking as we're watching the episode tonight, like, why? What was the point of them putting it in there? And I'm just starting to realize that it's kind of these inserts to just prolong the cases. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wish they kind of did, you know, maybe one case every two episodes mm -hmm. and kind of went on that path. But I mean, obviously, it's hard to try and prove all these people innocent, find that many people. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, let's start off with, with the first case, which was the case that we spoke majorly about last case, um, last time. Michael Polite. Polite. Please. I can Please. never Please. say Please. Please. You got it, you got it. We Please. had this discussion last time. <laughs> Michael Philippe. So this time we finally got to talk to the one suspect that everybody has been, you know, kind of had questioning about. He was, you know, one of the guy that was half on my list, half not on my imaginary mm -hmm. list of who mm -hmm. did it. Mr. Ed Polite, who is the father. Um, so how are you guys feeling now after sitting down, having the interview with Ed? How do we feel about his innocence or his guilt? What are we thinking? I am, I think... Well, I threw I threw the friend out because that's who I thought last time. So yeah. that's just completely gone. The but, friend, the little boy. That yeah, was with the, him. Little, the yeah. little boy. But um, I really have a a strong suspicion towards him now. Um, however, there is so much, not so much. There's one thing that's on his side, but mm -hmm. you know, how accurate is time of death when they find someone burned? Like, mm -hmm. how can you, you know, I I don't I don't. That is a huge question of mine at, at the end of this episode yeah. to be honest no that that is completely valid yeah. um yeah so we discussed that his alibi is kind of that he was there at 7 a.m to answer the phone right. call mm -hmm. and he was 90 miles away when the incident happened at 6 a.m so how could he possibly get there mm -hmm. so kind of question i'm kind of have the question of well did he have an accomplice did someone else help him that's what i thought i don't know yeah you mm -hmm. thought that too yeah but who would it have been you know that's well clearly like i don't think anyone knew who it was i thought i still think it's weird that they're not talking to the friend Mm -hmm. to be honest but with him he is so sketchy he was weird he was just as weird as nancy to be honest like i like before them talking to him i was like gonna think oh you know like maybe they're just tricking us like oh is it the dad and he's gonna be like totally normal and sad but he was like fake i i saw like 
right through him kind of like yeah. he, he was kind of fake you know yeah and it was I don't know he he rubbed me the wrong way too and and then I think it's even weird that he hasn't even come to, in contact with Michael like at all mm-hmm. like especially like I feel like he almost like feels bad that he has something to do with all this and Michael's in jail for it so that's like kind of the way he's pushing me a little bit so you think it's more of a guilt thing the way it yeah, is? I yeah feel, I feel like he's, he just feels like he's guilty that's just what I'm saying though yeah. I told you I'm keeping dad on that on that radar but but that's just kind of where I'm at with him no I agree sure. with you my first thing I wrote down was from the beginning he seems guilty he goes it's yeah. for Mike it's yeah. for Mike and right. it's is it really is it really for Mike or yeah his behavior was just totally bizarre during during the whole entire encounter I don't, first of all, his crying, I didn't mean to, like, be rude or insensitive, but I was like, really, bro? And it was, it kept on switching cameras, and they were just mm-hmm. like, just, are you just, done? She started yeah. laughing, like, while we're watching. I She's didn't like, mean to crack up, but it was just so weird. And especially the way he um, told the story of his encounter with the police officer, how they were, they were kind of like, you know, we don't even think that Michael did it. And the dad was like, he got all angry and started calling him names and getting like aggressive with mm-hmm. him and I'm not sure if he included that story to make him look innocent when in reality it just made him look even more guilty like you look like you have some anger problems or a you're, lot of anger lie, problems yeah, yeah. Like, like, crazy. so <laughs> irrationally uh-huh. you know and it whatever that little story was it did not go in his favor for doesn't me. help his case his not at all. yeah his mannerisms were just so yeah he was weird, it's like, it's it, weird. Yeah. anger I feel like is staged that comes fairly fairly quick mm-hmm. after certain things happen. You yeah. know, you have those stages of uh, grief. I know he didn't, his son didn't die, but yeah. to be that angry in that manner of really, he couldn't even control his body from shaking, mm-hmm. and then saying like that he was fearful. Uh, that was his. That was his it's, emotion. Yeah. It was so weird to me. And <clears throat> and then too, how they said like he he, he started um to. What, what did they say? The retrial or whatever, and he didn't oh, yeah. do that document. Like, yeah, he never so he never uh, filed the prop or filed the proper paperwork right. to be able to appeal the case. Right, and that's why him and Michael haven't talked for the past ten years. Because Michael's like, what are you doing? Like, how can you mess up? And like, that's how can you mess up? And the one thing, literally, the most important thing in my <laughs> right. life right. is this piece of paperwork, and you decided not to do it. And so you have to think either he was just lazy and crazy and weird, <laughs> as we see on on TV. Or it was he did it to kind of protect himself in a sense as well. Right. Um, the, the thing every when they were talking to him, the only thing that was in my mind was last episode when we chatted with the sisters, mm-hmm. and they said that this man is the one who sent that that funny joke sure. email of that uh, the car getting blown up with the wife inside, and mm-hmm. the husband had blown up the wife, and he was just saying LOL. And I'm like, this man here is trying to portray he's all with God and like mm-hmm. so that, like yes, he found Christian. the Lord. Yes. Yes. But he's sending these emails and not talking to his one son for ten years and sending his daughter weird, crazy death jokes. Right. I don't know. It all just rubbed me the wrong way. And like when yeah. you find God, don't you find God like I'm not <laughs> going just that. I'm not trying to offend anyone out there. But don't you normally, if you don't believe in God, come to find God after you've committed some sort of a heinous mm-hmm. act or have a really life-changing situation that makes you really question yourself as a human being? Well, yeah, well, you could go back and say the life-changing situation was that his son or that right. his son's in mm-hmm. jail or that his you know, his ex-wife yeah. but, was murdered. But, however, if he were, were to use that excuse that his son, his son is in jail and now he's a Christian man, wouldn't he try to you know, pursue a relationship with his son. Right. That's what I thought. And I thought it was even weirder when Eva asked him, um, why did you divorce your wife or why was that in the process? And he was like, I'd rather not talk about that right now because <laughs> I don't want to talk about Rita. And, yeah. and it's like, that's like important. <laughs> oh my that's God. That's important information. You have that's a like, spot on impression. Right? Right. 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 Just like him. Literally sound like. That's Thanks, incredible. guys. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it was, that's, that was just weird. Like, that's that's pretty important. Like why you're like he he even told, reason. He, he even told them that he wants to kill her four mm-hmm. days before she was murdered. Like that's why his attorney dropped him. So mm-hmm. so you can't be making these kind of like remarks and be like I don't want to talk about Rita because like she was my what like no. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, he doesn't want to ruin her <laughs> like, memory. What? I get that, but at I can't well, get it. But like yeah. but like especially like, with the jokes and everything too. Like if you can like like. 
if you can send a joke like that to your daughter and talk about her like that after she dies, why can't you tell people why you want to file a divorce? Yeah. It's because the camera's on his face right. and he's mm-hmm. trying to be all innocent. Right. Mm-hmm. And it also comes back to, I think, like, people that are just, like, trying to hide something for so long, sometimes they get excited and they mm-hmm. can kind of talk about it in yeah. a sense. Maybe that's something he's doing. I don't know. But his one quote was, that phone call, s- or Ryan said, that phone call saved your life. And mm-hmm. he responded with, yeah, and ruined his. Mm-hmm. in reference to Michael. Mm-hmm. That seemed genuine when he said that, but I don't know. All of it kind of eerie, made me just very eerie of him, well, and he's kind of back on my little suspect mm-hmm. list. Right. But um, yeah, so but in the beginning, but before we talked to Ed, before they showed Ed, they showed an interview with Crystal, who is Ed's ex, ex no, his ex-wife, not his ex-ex-wife. <laughs> so when he was Funny married girl. to Rita, he basically, you know, met, uh, met Crystal, they were having problems. He met Crystal, moved in with her, started having an affair with her. Uh, Crystal has since, they've gotten a divorce since, they are no longer together. Um, but Crystal sat down and they, they kind of chatted and she was basically showing that Michael is innocent. Mm-hmm. She has no reason to believe why Michael, you know, would do this at all. At first, when she was sitting down, because I always think someone's a suspect, I was like, could this woman have done it? She has right. every reason in the world. Um, but after talking with her, I don't think so. What about you guys? That didn't even cross my mind. Uh, no? It she just looked like, she looked too, like, um... <laughs> Did I just assume no, that we that's all good, were though. thinking that's, this? No, that's, that's, that's good, that's my good. Wrong question, guys. No, that's why <laughs> m- multiple, uh, perspectives she just looked too meek to, to yeah. me to I don't I don't know it just never the floral shirt maybe that's what it was or something <laughs> but um she I'm just to play the devil's advocate yeah. real quick here um she was heavy on the ed kind of being the main suspect side yet you were married to him till 2012 so what I want to know what happened something happened I think that, that he either threatened her or he he did something well, to, to well, piss her off, or maybe he got the divorce from her, but he did something, I think, also to make her be so adamant about him possibly committing it. I mean, you were with the man for years, mm-hmm. so I don't think you just come to that conclusion. Did either. you guys pick up on her quote when she said, I'm almost <clears throat> too afraid to talk about it, like yeah. toward the end of their interview? And I I was thinking that the entire time, too, because she seemed, she was kind of like persuading me into thinking that Ed did it, but it's like, mm-hmm. if you had this perspective on him for this entire time and you I don't know it seems like she had been suspicious but for her to be in a relationship with this man that Mm -hmm. she like really could see well she didn't come out and say it but just you know the way Mm -hmm. she was kind of dancing around it kind of seems like she thought Ed could do it Mm -hmm. but it was bizarre Mm -hmm. that you could really be married to this man for this amount of time and be suspicious of that Mm -hmm. and they had to have gotten married after Weird. Because well, they weren't even weird. married when he yeah. did it. I think it's just love, so. too, at the time. Like, you know, you love someone so much. I know. I right? know. It <laughs> sounds so cliche, but it's like, you love someone so much. Like, could they have done it? I mean, she said that in the back of her head, possibly. But yeah. maybe it wasn't until he became aggressive and right. how he was with Rita that she kind of realized, hey, maybe this is the guy. Mm-hmm. Chris, um, however, I can't help but think, after you guys mentioned this last time, that thinking about the producer side of it, everyone is pointing to dad right now. So we all think it's dad. I really want them to talk to it's, the friend, like so bad. That's like pretty huge. But but everything's pointing to dad right now. And mm-hmm. but I feel like they might like bring some out of like the woodwork now or soon. Uh, I don't and, know. We'll you know, see. Yeah. I don't know. It's only episode two, so who, hopefully they'll bring more yeah. suspects into mm-hmm. it. But I mean, the way that they're just inserting yeah, random stuff, random stuff. Random random stuff. Random. doesn't <laughs> kind of seem like it. Um, <sighs> But yeah, but right now on him, we kind of had the proof that we have the proof that he has anger management issues, huge anger management issues. Mm-hmm. His lawyer during his divorce with Rita, while Rita was still alive, decided to quit because right. he was threatening her life. Mm-hmm. Um, he was ref- talking about he doesn't want to play child support, how he was just rude and always furious with Rita and stuff. So he has all of the anger stuff kind of going against him mm-hmm. in a sense. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, but one thing that, or two things actually, that Crystal had chatted about when, in terms of Michael. Um, she was really protective over him, and, and mm-hmm. I think one, the quote she says was that he had told her, I'm going to get him for setting me up, mm-hmm. in reference to Ed. And I don't understand why, though, she said at the time she didn't know what that was referring to. I don't you understand, understand what that's that. referring to? Yeah. He's in jail. I was right. rolling my eyes. <laughs> She's like, to this day, I still, I'm like, really? Because <laughs> I just heard it two seconds ago, and I like, I know right. what it means. Get yeah. a grip. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we all know that the only <laughs> yeah, thing a 14-year-old so be set up for is, in this circumstance, <laughs> killing his mother. Um, and then the other thing was that 
he was questioning Santa Claus at the age of 14. <laughs> so I'm for sorry. me, yeah. It's not fun. It's, it's, the situation's not fun. But it but kind yeah. of, no, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, obviously it's abnormal. It's right. something at 14 years old you should pretty clearly understand. But it just makes me think, okay, well, does Michael maybe have some type of issue socially or, I don't know, that's kind of inhibiting him s- from doing stuff, which means he could have possibly, Are I we, know. yeah, I'm wondering, is this Santa Claus story trying to be in Michael's favor favor or against him? I don't know. Because, oh, no, it's okay, like, because he's this naive, <laughs> yeah. does yeah. that mean, like, he ha- has a mental disability that would cause him to do this, or he's too naive and too innocent to do this? I didn't even think about that, I to be totally honest. Yeah. When, I, when they were saying that, I was thinking more like, Oh, their family dynamic must be so nice then if, if they're making oh him believe God. that yeah. Santa Claus still exists at 14. Like, I wish yeah. I still believe in Santa Claus at 14. I still believe in Santa Claus. That was the first thing I thought. So I, I, didn't, I honestly didn't even, like, think about that or that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was just like, wow. Like, they must have had, like, that awesome, like, family connection to, like... <laughs> That's that, beautiful. They care so much about him to, like, make his childhood oh last forever God. kind of thing. Keep but, your okay. pure soul. Keep I your know. pure, innocent soul. I love it so much. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I think it's supposed to be meant to show that he's like I mean at least what she's trying to do is show that he was just an innocent little boy basically okay. but I took it opposite I took it completely like this kid has mental issues maybe and I, maybe could have committed something I'm loving where you're coming from today with everything I, just, like, I know I, I've been slept this is what happens to me I haven't slept in a while I'm like he believes in Santa Claus yeah he sets fires on railroad tracks like I <laughs> Right? Yeah. He believes in Santa. So he definitely starting to go with you. I'm definitely starting to go with I know, you. It that doesn't that completely <laughs> yeah, match. It's just he, a thought. He does might he might he might have a yeah. disorder. When you say that though, he doesn't believe in Santa. So he, That's or he believes know. in Santa, he burned his mind. That okay. Yeah. Brings me back a little. <laughs> but it's just it's something to think about. All right, evidence. All right, yeah, you know, a little bit of evidence. And then um and something we've kind of been just uh, talking about inserts and people coming into the show that we're not really sure why is Micah, who is our host, Ryan's <laughs> girlfriend. Um, so yeah, I want to hear everyone's kind of thought on this. I know we all kind of have similar <laughs> thoughts about this, but so Micah and uh, Ryan, we do not know. We've rewound this twice now to see um, whether or not Micah and him met while they were in prison. <laughs> Or they were friends before he got into prison and rekindled their friendship. Uh, it isn't clear. We watched it with captions on. Um, so, guys, what do you guys feel about prison love? Can you, if anybody's watching this and yes. has a better <laughs> explanation you. for this, please, you know, tweet me, co- like, do something because I'm s- really sincerely interested in this situation. Yeah, because what she says is is that they were friends for a while. They were friends, and then one year she just decided to send him a birthday card, and then they just started chatting, and mm-hmm. then they basically started falling in love, and then she ran his whole social media campaign to try and get him out of prison, and it worked, and now they're in love, and they live together in Florida. Um, so how do we feel about Micah? I thought she meant that, like, she sent him a birthday card while he was in jail. So I was like, wow. But she did. Yeah. She did yeah. send him in jail. Like, but, like, di- but, like, we don't know if they met before that. So, like, my thought was, like, they've never met before that. Mm-hmm. That was not And well. this is how they, like, what a love story is this? <laughs> like, yeah. oh, my gosh. Um, first of all, why does he have a girlfriend? He's so cute. <laughs> like, oh can, we have, can we have Ryan, girl if talking? you're watching. <laughs> I have a boyfriend. Sorry. Oh. Guys, sorry, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's but, it, it's up in the but, air. About um, them. But yeah, that's that's bizarre. She's cute too, but like how I don't understand. Like, was he getting famous? And she was like, "Oh, let me send you a little birthday card." Like, she because, likes the bad because boys. I, I'm gonna pimp up your social media account. And... <laughs> yeah, it was just it was so random. I know. That she even got well, inserted. It could go either way. Yeah. First of all, I don't even understand why like why it was necessary for her to be there. Mm-hmm. She just like got lunch with them. Okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. But, um, so it could really go, like, I, at first, I understood it as, like, they went to school together or something, but these are all, like, assumptions I was making. Like, I just assumed they went to school together and, like, she just, you know, Mm -hmm. wanted to reach out to him, whatever, because she's kind of a pretty girl. Like, why do you need to, uh, do that? Well, <laughs> you're just so pretty. Why do you need to get a boyfriend like, in jail? Why are you, why you like, get... desperate? Like, I don't know. Whatever. That's, that's how... don't attack me. Like, I really don't know. <laughs> that's how I read it as, too. I'm like, oh, they, they, because it was like, we've been friends for a while. I sent him a birthday card one year, and then it, like, blossomed into this thing. And that's where I read it as, like, mm-hmm. I watched a show, okay, for real, about how these women do actually target, like, 
not Target, I'm sorry, Thanks. again. But they, <laughs> they send, you know, mail to people in prison mm-hmm. that they, you know, feel for or that mm-hmm. they don't think. And I get it. He did have a, a very um, vocal platform for what he was, you know, going through. But um, I just, like you said, it's random. Why why was that even in there? Why do we yeah. need to know about her? And why do we need to know that she was his social media manager? I yeah. don't Maybe Well, I mean, we're telling his backstory. Yeah. yeah. It, they don't really talk more about his backstory but then besides it that kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they're just, I mean, I get they're kind of just inserting his backstory. Um, I don't know. I think it's just a just a thing that we yeah. were all just thrown off yeah. by <laughs> it was like with Micah. One thing MTV's though. keeping us on our feet. <laughs> yeah, the four of us collectively the all looked at each other like, what's happening right now? So Thank you, I'm, I'm almost happy they did, though, because um, it kind of shows that she's, you know, into, like, fighting for people's rights to get out of jail, that innocent kind mm-hmm. of thing. So I, I feel like she, she'll add some pizzazz to, to mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah, maybe we'll she'll s- make social media campaigns yeah, for yeah. the other people. I think that's what they're kind of getting at. That's yeah. what they're tying into because mm-hmm. she was kind of giving, you know, advice to Ava and, mm-hmm. and him about that. So. I wish they would have talked about the other two people's social media platforms a little more than, like, maybe that mm-hmm. would have been, like, an added, like, oh, like, this is what... I mean, they, they did show the dad talking, but I don't no. think they really got into much more. So that's what I was... That was the lackluster thing. Yeah, maybe we'll... <laughs> who knows? Maybe, we'll, maybe she'll be around yeah, for the rest of the season. <laughs> She's not going anywhere. Uh, so, yeah, so that's kind of all the new details that we kind of learned on, on Michael's case. Um, kind of still the same platform where they left us last time where, hey, the Ed is probably the guy who did it. Um, mm-hmm. So for me, too, I want to know about... I want to know about the Aunt Nancy again, mm-hmm. and I want to know about the uh, the friend. Mm-hmm. Those are my suspects, but Ed has cl- climbed up to number one. Wait a second. Yes. <laughs> I just had, like, a realization. Uh, could his sister have been an accomplice in this? Si- because I didn't realize that it, Ed's sister is the one that lived on the property. Oh, right, because we thought Ed's it was sister. Rita. Why do you I think thought they were no. related to Rita, but they're yeah. not. They're related right. to Ed because he said my sister called me and said right. there had been a fire. Ooh. Why? Was it? No, that's was it that's interesting. Sister. Maybe his sister did. She, his, Wait, his sister, sister is Nancy? He, well, this is what he said. He said... Uh, my sister had called me and told me it was a fire. And he, I don't know if this is, he said, like, oh, the house or something. And she was like, no, Rita. Oh. So are we saying that Nancy is Ed's sister? She has to be because why Why would this random sister out never, of nowhere right. know before he? Be unless she property. lived on the property. So last week, because last week we thought that, um, uh, what was his name? The uncle. I thought that that was Rita's brother. Chuck? Was it Chuck? Chuck, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're talking, okay. We need to look this up. We need yeah. to research, because that changes a lot of things. I'm telling you. That changes, okay, we are going to research this, we'll look this up, and we'll chat about it <laughs> next time, because that makes a lot of sense, Done. and then she could be an accomplice, and that's why she's so... <gasps> okay, now I, now I get what you're and saying. And that's why she's so, like... Weird. Yeah, she's she's on my list for a reason. For a reason. You were all right. right. You were all right, all right. We'll have to see. that one out. So, yeah, so that's Michael. We'll see what happens next week. Now, let's move on to our, uh, our second case uh, that they introduced to us tonight. They kind of gave us a taste of it last week just a little bit but they really dived into it this week this man's name is calvin michael smith he was sentenced to 29 years in prison for assault with intent to kill this happened in north carolina in 1995 Uh, the victim the uh the victim i guess he was accused of it um she's still alive she's pregnant at the time everything's okay with the baby uh but the thing was is that she was in a coma for 10 years um, she was beaten, she was found in her pool of blood, and she was able to identify him in the photo lineup. Initial thoughts on this case, guys. This guy makes me never want to have ex-boyfriends. Honestly. That, when we talk about those calls, I have something to say. All right, <laughs> we'll get to it, we'll get to he it. He has all of his exes calling the popo, saying, no, he totally did it, like, <laughs> is that impersonation? Yeah, you're, you're doing a great <laughs> right, impersonation. We're just keep you on for that. <laughs> No, but I thought that was weird that, like, all of his exes... I mean, his friend his friend told on him, or mm-hmm. if he did it, you know, yeah. right? But, um, I don't know, I thought it was kind of weird that all of his exes are, are calling the police saying, he did it. Look, like, why do Strange. they even have but connection with him Keyword ex, like, right. are you serious? No. Is yeah. that really, like, count as much? Mm-hmm. I don't know. No. But I just think they're set... In the beginning, I, I don't know, I just fall for all of MTV's tricks, I feel. Like, I was just... <laughs> fall, like, really, I'm like, this guy's guilty. Like, how could he not be? All the... But, you know, as it went on, I mean... I really thought it was him until the complete, like, end of the episode where my opinion sort of changed. Yeah, so what kind of happened is, so just to, you know, everyone watch, we can fill in once again. 
was his first ex-girlfriend, one ex-girlfriend, said that um, he told her about it. This was months after this had already happened. Months have gone by. They have no idea who the person was that did this, or so the police say. Um, so they brought him in. He took a polygraph test. He passed it. They let him go. And then a few years, months late go by, and a second ex-girlfriend decides to say that he didn't say he did it. He said he was there in the moment. Um, and then at the same time, his friend Little John says, oh, I was with him that night. And yes, he was at the store. And then <laughs> Little John's, yes. <laughs> I know, I'm little John. No, so seriously. And Eugene. then, Eugene and then, Little, like, Little's his middle name. I can't. <laughs> they call him Little John. And then Little John's girlfriend, Pamela, says that she had also heard him say that. So there are four people right there, two ex-girlfriends, a best friend, and then a best friend's girlfriend. So three girlfriends, in a sense, and a guy that are all claiming that he was the one who was there and did it. Um, and that is basically, primarily, uh, oh is gosh. that Lil John? My name ringing. We're my good. alarm went off. Um, can I just intercept? Yeah, yeah. I didn't get to when you started off with yeah. the um, identifying. Yeah, yeah. I just want to know how someone who's, and it's very sad what happened to the victim. I mean, obviously she had nothing to do with the situation, but how someone whose brain is a puddle of mush mm -hmm. can identify someone based on blinking. I just want to throw that out there because that is so up for debate on was she blinking because her eyes were dry? Was she, I mean, I want to know what kind of blink it was. I want to see the tape. Like, I don't... Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I, that to me was just so suspect. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, she was in a coma for, yeah. you know, for so long, 10 right. months. Right. Um, and I, I agree with you. And that's, I think, also Ava, uh, the woman who, Ava and Ryan, the yes. woman who's, who's uh, looking into this case as well, she said the same thing. Right. She said that she wants to see more details and of About what that. actually that just, happened. I didn't with even that. know they could do that. But that's how you're going to use yes. to identify someone, put them in jail. I agree. Well, and how do they determine that her state of mind is like correct and accurate enough right. to like remember d and determine like something mm -hmm. like this? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, completely. Yeah, it's. And it just goes back to what we kind of find out later, which we'll we'll start to talk about kind of now, is that the police may have just been corrupt and kind of wanted. In all these cases, we're just kind of finding corrupt police yeah. work or lazy mm -hmm. police work. Mm -hmm. it, I think it's more lazy than corrupt, uh, which leads to corrupt well, police work. Well, it's kind of the the factor in all of them. Like something that um, the dad that Calvin's dad said, just, like really, I think summed what you said perfectly. He was like, you know, how many people are in prison because they had to hurry up and solve a crime? Because you know, this was a white woman. This was a pregnant white woman. Right. Like. It was a crime that had to be solved, you know, just mm -hmm. to like, you know what it is. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? They just, it's something that they had to do and, <clears throat> you know, convicting Calvin of this crime just kind of like, all right. Cleaned it up yeah. quick. Yeah, well, yeah. this one, I mean, this is falling under like the lazy platform too, but I feel like this one's also falling under like a more racist platform as well. Mm -hmm. And especially when they talk to Calvin's attorney. Uh, Dr. Yeah, so they talked to Dr. Williams. Dr. Williams, mm -hmm. and even he said, you "No, know, no, Dr. No, Williams no, is no, Jim. Jim. Dr. Williams Jim Coleman is, is the attorney. Yes, mm -hmm. Dr. Williams is the um, yes, the agent. The agent. Yeah, yeah. And um, they were just saying, you know, he has a reputation of of having you know Dr. Confessions, which were like kind of you know not accurate confessions at all. So he was the one that had said that." Um, Calvin had confessed to it or something, or that he was there. Or no, he, he said that he was there, right? That he was inside. He was inside. That he was inside the, mm -hmm. the building, the yeah. store. So this this one's kind of like leaning towards like a different route and like the more like racist route. While having a racial slur. While having a right. racial slur, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, so the person kind of heading Calvin's try for release is Jim Coleman, who's his attorney, and he works for Duke University. And yeah, the whole time we're talking with him, you're bringing up this whole race aspect, and that's kind of what we took away from it, was that this man, Dr. Williams, he had a horrible reputation for cutting corners and being a racist. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at it from that perspective, um, obviously just by him saying this, you can't really go off that. Maybe they have the personal vengeance or is the reason why he's talking about that. But then they go and show multiple people, multiple ADAs who assistant attorney, um, uh, attorney uh, general. General. general, yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, so they, they have multiple people like that who said, yeah, he cuts corners. Right. So they've proven that to kind of be true. So now this kind of goes into, you know, racial profiling type case, um, in a sense. 
And yeah, it's just, I think that they really need to, you know, dive more into who he is and the cases that he's tried. And if I were them, I would kind of look into the cases he's tried, see the type of people he's put into jail for those cases, see if there's any red flags of those cases, and then you can kind of prove. And the ratios, you know. even, mm -hmm. of the crimes. <laughs> for, you know, like what, I mean, you have to, you kind of, when you're claiming, you know, when it is looking like a racist case, you do need to look into, I think, the profiles of the people, too, mm -hmm. that the detective has put away and, and what maybe the situations were mm -hmm. previously. So I completely agree. Yeah, of course. Can mm -hmm. you guys help clear me up on something? Yeah. So do we find out where Calvin says he was in the mix of this? Like, what, what made him a suspect of this crime? Was he in the store? Was he by the store? In the store? Store, right? Well, no. Based so he the says calls. they. Well, they say that he was in the store. That he said that, but that could have been all made up. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, I don't. I don't so have any recollection of that. So the only reason why he is a suspect is because of the the tips that were the called calls. in. But yep. then also remember, um, what what was it that the detective had him write down? Yeah, the detective had him write down that I was inside the store. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, that was right. inside the but store. But he was wasn't all... even in the picture of this whole entire yeah. crime until his ex, his ex is called up. Mm -hmm. but I have a question. Where are the cameras in the store? Where are the or like even on that street? You know what I mean? Or like where's the DNA? Like if whoever attacked her, couldn't there have been footprints or DNA or like? Does any of this even like come up? And you know what I mean? Well, yeah, it may come up. Also, we have to remember this was 1995, so oh. there wasn't. I oh. mean, there were obviously security <laughs> cameras and all that stuff, but it wasn't how it is today, where yeah. you can't. It's so hard. I feel like mm -hmm. to commit a crime today. Like yeah. if I was a <laughs> robber, I would quit because <laughs> I would <laughs> fail. Job. Yeah, I would. I would really yeah, fail because yeah. Now mm -hmm. it's everywhere we go. We just there's yeah. cameras and there's mm -hmm. ways to track it. But back then, you know. It's hard. And yeah. if you look at the kind of town based on when they were going door, door to door, it's a very mm -hmm. small, yeah, probably underprivileged, it mm -hmm. looked like town. So I don't know that necessarily the flowers, the silk flower store is going to have. Yeah, fun. at that time. Right. right. Yeah. Which is a crazy yeah. thought for us because we just assume now. No, but, you know, I know. Even 95, yeah. it doesn't seem that. That was like over 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. technology, you know, it's gone All up. Right. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so then yeah. we go and we chat with Calvin's father and this whole scene at the rally at his house. It was super emotional, especially emotional for Ryan that we see. Ryan really starts to, to break down and um, he kind of starts, he says that a part of him is waking up again that's been dead for so long. And I almost started to cry. I was like, Ryan, because he's so cute. Um, so I was just so, I was kind of happy to see Ryan get a little emotional, emotional and to see, I like seeing these little, these little inserts with Ryan because we forget, yeah, he's not just a host. But he was actually in prison for 10 mm -hmm. years of his life when he didn't do it. So I like seeing him, you know, get a little deep as well. It reminds you too, because we keep saying it, yeah. but it's like, yeah. you get emotionally involved. Yeah. And I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it just, it's, it's nice to see him. I don't know. I like it. He's feeling. He's feeling. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they have a great conversation. Or I guess it's not, I don't know if it's a great conversation on the phone with Calvin uh, at their father's house, but it, it shows that how involved Calvin's father is to trying to help him get out, which I'm kind of wanting to tie back to Michael's father from the other case and showing how Michael's father has no intent to help get his son out. Mm -hmm. And then also the fact that Ryan's father had so much help with getting him out. Yeah. So it, 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 I'm going back to the first mm -hmm. case with Ed and Michael and it just, that puts a red flag up to me mm -hmm. that oh. these other fathers are so intent on helping their son get out of jail because they're so innocent. And Ed is just not caring at all. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, I don't know. I don't know. Does that, no, that's a no, great, yeah, that that's a great point. Yeah. All right. We all agree with me. We can just yeah, move yeah, on. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. I'm great. All right. All right. Great. <laughs> yeah. And so then the last person that we get to chat with about Calvin's case for this episode is Gianna Schofer. Um, so she is the last person that Jill, who is the victim of um, the horrible beating, she's the last person that Jill had called. And we find out that Jill is, or she's was the boss of Jill, um, not the boss of Jill in <laughs> life, but she was her boss at the state care that they worked at together. And we find out some information from her that's kind of really, really relevant and much needed. <laughs> yeah. Really, really we, relevant. Yeah, wow. we find out that there was this man um, who was basically Jill Stalker in a sense. He was the father of one of the daycare children and he was a very violent guy, had a restraining order from the child daycare center because he was beating his wife and he shouldn't be running into his wife. 
all this crazy stuff's happening. And he had just been released from the mental hospital right around the time that Jill was beaten to death. This is a book. Oh, wow. I know. Like, you like, can't make this up. Like, are yeah. you serious? Yeah. Well, like, I don't even have anything to say. Like, is is it not obvious? I feel like it should be like, boom. Right? And we're just, we're we just sing these laid few there. sentences. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't even question him. Mm-hmm. They haven't even questioned him yet. Um, and she, Gianna says that on the phone, Jill, when Jill called her, she just said, he's here, he's here. And she said, who's here? And he, she said his name, Kenneth Lamero, who is this man. Mm-hmm. That right there is, How, is evidence enough. Like, yeah. we have him at the scene. We have him uh, right. seriously, like, obsessed with her. He mm-hmm. was just at a mental hospital. Like, what? He beat his wife in public. Mm-hmm. I don't in, in, in a child care center. I mean, the man yeah. is trash. Yeah. Like, I no, he's don't. Trash understand it hopefully next episode like this gets cleared up as to why Mm -hmm. he's not well they even said that it was unclear why he was dropped as a suspect Mm -hmm. what's sad what's sad to me (laughs) is that it's like we're all sitting here like why why was gianna only questioned once why Mm -hmm. were these two women that put in statements not questioned and it's like I'm just gonna put it out there. It's it is. I think it really is a race case now. Mm-hmm. After you see like everything, like it it's. I think just pure and utter racism of mm-hmm. of the area or of the police force in that community. I, I, it's North Carolina. I mean, I know. And she even mentioned, you know, like yeah, she only got questioned once, and she didn't push for the you know the further evidence at all. Right. So everyone just thinks, oh, the police know what they're doing. They got the job right. and everything. Mm-hmm. When really they don't even know that what they know matters so much and which even goes back to a race case because they they could have they they didn't even look at the cell phone records they only been you know what i mean like that's like extremely like big information you know what i mean mm-hmm. so the fact that they wouldn't even like go back to that is kind of bizarre yeah you know? and i think this is a big thing too like hopefully like people watching like don't right. like is my yes trust the police police great obviously mm-hmm. but Trust your information too, and your gut, and make sure that you're being heard, and, and that type of stuff with any type of situation. If anyone, I was just thinking, I'm like, in a situation, I'm gonna fall through on like life, you know, like, just on yeah. life. Just don't like just that can't. takeout order. Is it coming? Because <laughs> I trust that it is, but it might like no. You go down seriously. To the store and you go grab because your takeout. It, I mean, no, but like we do, but we do. When you think about it, like yeah. if your food's not there and an hour, like you're gonna call and check up. Like this, it's crazy kind of to me too that the woman like didn't didn't call back and was like, hey. Uh, I love that you're relating this to calling like, about your takeout but order. No, but I'm, I'm saying like, but takeout's so basic and that's something that people like flip out about. Yeah, I get it. I but get it's it. like your friend, your coworker is mm-hmm. literally in the hospital and you're just, okay, one statement and you're just going to trust that it happened. Well, like it didn't happen and what have you done since yeah. then? No, it's valid. And, you know, people are in shock and stuff. So yeah, so she yeah. called in the morning to the police and told them exactly what happened. And um, and that was kind of, yeah, like you're saying, that was kind of it. Nothing else kind of happened from that. So um, and yeah, so she even makes a statement that when they were at the daycare, whenever they would see him before the restraining order happened, mm-hmm. whenever he would come pick up the child, they would kind of make a joke in a sense is the way she kind of put it. Like, oh, where's Jill? Like, let's go protect Jill. And I'm like, that's not funny, especially yeah. now. Like, I don't know why she's making that no. into it's a weird just, joke. Like, I feel the fact of the biggest fact is that she was on the phone and Jill herself is saying, like, oh my God, he's here, he's here. And she was mm-hmm. fearful. And that's the last thing she said before she got attacked. Duh. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. Are you kidding me? I don't know. Do you think that we'll get to see him? I, I want to know so. what happened. So, I hope so. I thought it'd be really creepy. I can't wait to like <laughs> judge him. You know, just like see his mannerism and like yeah. how he acts. I have a feeling that he's like in a mental institution right <laughs> Today, now, right? And that's, that's why. And that's like, why like we haven't seen him. I mean, we just got introduced, but it's right not now. like it's been forever. But, but they, I feel like they haven't shown him or even tried uh, yet. Um, so yeah, and then another thing that kind of goes against um, against him being the one who did it, not not Kenneth. Um, Calvin being the one that did it is there were two witnesses right yeah (laughs) like I'm using the word witness like people that were there at the scene and Mm -hmm. saw exactly the last person that Jill was with Mm -hmm. and they both Cynthia Cloud and Stella Good um, they both at this at different times and without knowing each other talking to each other said the exact same statement Mm -hmm. that she her and a white man were in there and then they both identified the exact same man in a photo lineup. Mm-hmm. Separately. Sep- yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, Separately, yeah, without like, chatting right, with each right. other. But their stories it, didn't line up. When they remember when they were questions 
uh, they said that the police told them that their stories didn't line up. No, the they police, did they did line up. They did line up. The stories did line up, and they okay. said it at separate times, right. but okay. the police never really took that into okay. account, even though they pointed at the exact same man. They even said um, he was, like, creepy. They were like, he looks so suspicious, like, mm-hmm. he looks creepy, but, like, that's, this is still, like, important information, like, which goes back to a race case, because like, they're like, oh, but was he white? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... Oh. It's all crazy. And when they were going from door to door and they seeing if Cynthia Cloud lived there, <laughs> at first, my first thought, I wrote down, I was like, did she even live there? Was she lying? I was right. I was thinking, oh, maybe Cynthia and Stella are just the ones oh. that are up to no good. And then I got proven wrong on my own. So I just had to throw that out and admit that to everyone that I, like, yeah, I messed up for a second in my own head. <laughs> it's, it's so okay. it's great. My train of thought went off the rails. Um, so, yeah, so we have all of this evidence now pointing, you know, mm. That kind of uh, Lamero, Kenneth Lamero, that he was the one that did it, and Calvin is innocent. Um, so I'm kind of believing in this case yeah. more and more now mm-hmm. that Calvin is innocent. In the beginning of the case, I was like, I, I can't, you know, right. I think mm-hmm. he's guilty. Um, mm-hmm. So what about you guys? I agree with you tenfold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I agree too. The fact that uh, a blank is more valid than two women that are completely able. The, their mm-hmm. statements are not as valid as a woman who's now disabled. Ugh, mm-hmm. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, no. It's crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just, it's, that's it. Yeah. And the I'm, fact that this woman yeah. also said, uh, Stella Good said she remembered the exact case 20 years later mm-hmm. and then said that, like, oh, yeah, and that other woman, the exact same statement as me. Mm-hmm. She's like, I don't know what happened to it. I kind of want to still, I still want to find Cynthia because yeah. I, I really, <laughs> and Cynthia. just for my own peace of mind, I want to know, like, I want to know what her ethnicity is too because it it really I'm sorry I'm doing this right now but it is literally like you know Stella was an African American woman supporting the the case like I want to know what Cynthia is because it's just this is really sad and it's sad that I mean this has been going on for so long but like this was in 1995 and it's just they're it's not just, even really bringing that up in the show, which not, is kind yeah. of weird. It they're is. not really like making a big deal mm-hmm. of it or even bringing it up as, you know, a possibility. Yeah. They kind of did though. D- uh, the attorney Jim Coleman, he did. He's saying that Dr. Yeah. Williams was a racist. That was all he. That. All he really um, said was that he was right. a racist. Though they're not bringing yeah. into fat like they're not. I don't know. They're, they're just they not like focusing it. on it when I think it's a much larger deal Issue. than they're making. Yeah, right. it. I think it's just more. It's harder to kind of you know, especially when you talk about the police, like harder to prove that in yeah. a sense. I don't know. It's a sticky line. Also, right. we've only you know seen half an episode. Yeah. I love of this case. This though. case. Yeah, yeah. So what case are we? Well, not so, what case is better. It's just <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> so wrong in so many ways. But I never say that. It's it's like like but the case that I think is more you know. I think just because we know, kind mm-hmm. of, I mean, I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm not going to speak for you guys, but I think I know that Kenneth was the one that did this right now. Okay, but are they tricking us? Like, come I, on. I was just Why say, is it so obvious? I'm going to go out on a limb here because both of these cases are kind of doing the same thing and pointing to pointing to like specific people and making us believe one thing, but I don't know. Like, why would they be doing this in both cases? You know what I mean? Like, I that's just my thought. I think MTV is making this for children my age that <laughs> is, luckily I'm surrounded by you guys to tell me that no the the producer side I don't know but I I think I think one of the cases will actually end up being who we th- like um, the person that they've been saying it is mm-hmm. and one of them is just going to be like not mm-hmm. crazy I don't know yeah I don't know see I think <laughs> I think that yeah, I think you're kind of right and yeah. I think in the beginning when we were showing that uh, in Mike for Michael's case that Ed the father they were really pointing last episode that it was him who did it. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying, well, it couldn't have been because his alibi. So now our head is away. But if the theory that we were talking about, that Ed had an accomplice, Mm -hmm. his sister, sister. then that proved that got us off tracks, but we're thinking one step ahead. You know, I bet (laughs) they didn't even think of that, and I just gave them the idea. And now they're going to look into it, and you're welcome. (laughs) My now they're going to call you and be like, can you help us? Work for us. So, uh, yeah, so that's kind of... You know what we have going. So should we do a little bit some predictions going on, guys? <laughs> and now your After Buzz TV predictions. So uh, I guess I'll just I'll kick it off. Um, like I said, I think it's I, I like our theory of the Ed and sister dynamic duo of you know trying to end a divorce, a sticky divorce, quicker than it needed to be. With murder. That was really, you know, that was intense. That was my, you know, 
nightly news. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm going with Ed for Michael's case, and I am going to go with Kenneth for, uh, for Calvin's case. What about you guys? I'm still, I'm still a little in the dark, I think, with Michael's case, but I think with Kenneth's, Kenneth's, Kenneth's case, <laughs> um, that Ed is definitely the main proponent. And I think also a prediction or something that MTV should just listen to, I think a public service announcement should go out for, like, these kids, these are kids, and like what you were talking about earlier with the the with Ed beating his wife mm -hmm. in front of people. Like, I think public service announcements need, now announcements need to go out on shows like this where people are like doing suspect things in public and like mm -hmm. people aren't calling well, there about is it. Something, that, that just yeah. really. Do you ever see those advertisements? It's not for the same thing, but would there? It's like see something, say something. Yes, like yeah, in and, airports and, and things right, like that. Right, mm -hmm. but that it appears applies. on shows that have like sticky subject matter, and these have sticky subject matter. But yes, yeah. anyways, that's yeah. My I prediction. was thinking of that as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, for the first one, I think it's Dad, but I I do think his accomplice is Nancy, but which makes her the actual murderer. So it makes him the not murder, but makes him a part of the case. So I'm gonna stick with that. I still want to talk to the friend, though, honestly, on that one. And with the Calvin case, one of them have to be wrong, so I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to go with Kenneth. Kenneth? Yeah, Kenneth. Kenneth for now, but I, I need to meet more people. I need to look into this a little bit more. I love that you're saying that one of them has to be wrong. That's just your own to, thing right? that you stuck on yourself, and now you're That's just like going with it. That's like in the SATs when they're like, if there's two C's in a row, like, don't right. panic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Come on, they can't all be wrong. All right. That's just what I'm thinking, uh, okay? <laughs> yeah, right. well, you all know what I think, yeah. so. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for chatting with us. Uh, write in the comment section below what you guys think. Who are your predictions? Who do we think did it? Um, you guys like us on iTunes. Give us five stars. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us everywhere as well. Uh, my name is Nadine, and you can follow me personally at Nadine DP in the number three. I'm Abigail Frere, and you can follow me at Abigail Frere. I am Maddie Makeley, and you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Maddie underscore Makeley. And I'm Olivia Gavry, and follow me at the real underscore O underscore G. G. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. All right, guys, until next time. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.